Hey everybody, it's Retired at 40. I just finished a batch of my Harvestrite and I've noticed that there's a lot of new Harvestrite owners that are looking for some tips and some tricks. And since I have some used oil now, I'm going to show you today how to make an inexpensive filtering system that's pretty unbeatable, really. So if you're new to the Harvestrite and freeze drying, then you'll quickly notice that one of your least favorite things to do with freeze drying is changing the oil, filtering the oil. And if you haven't checked out the Dairyland oil video, I highly recommend checking that out. It's a really good oil. Um, it's a lot better than most other things and you can get it in quite a few places now. So since we have a, a, a dirty pan of oil, let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you how to make a filter. So if you've been freeze drying a while, this trick might be old hat for you, but one of the things I love about Harvestrite is there's such a good community of people that are willing to share their knowledge, their experience, etc. And this particular tip actually came from a viewer of mine and I, I tried it out and I loved it and I'll never look back. So here's the Dairyland oil. I believe they use it for uh, milkers, for milking cows on the vacuum pumps. Um, it works really, really good for the vacuum pump for the freeze dryer. You can see this oil has had two cycles through it actually. It's still translucent. You can still see through it surprisingly. And it's still just a real deep blue color. Normally if you put other vacuum pump oil in, it, has, it, it pulls in smells, it turns funky colors. And this one actually has detergents in it as well. So it keeps the internals of the vacuum pump clean at the same time as you're using it. I'll put a link where you can get this on Amazon, but you can actually get this quite a few different places now. A lot of farm stores carry it, True Values carry it, and it's about the same price as anything else that you can buy. So the filtering system is extremely easy. It's just, a, a, you take a Brita pitcher, you can find them at Salvation Army or Goodwill or somewhere like that, or you can buy a used one on eBay. It doesn't really matter if it's used because you're putting oil into it anyway. And I love the Brita pitcher system also because it has a pour spout on it. So it really saves a mess when you've got your oil filtered, you can just pour it back into a container. I keep an extra oil container and I put my, I keep my new oil in the new container and then I put my once filtered oil into another container. And then I just keep moving it into the once filtered. And then once I'm full in the once filtered, I start using that once filtered. So when you buy a Brita pitcher, it's going to have this removable lid and then inside there will be a Brita filter. You just pull that Brita filter out so it's completely hollow. And all there is to a Brita filter is just a reservoir on the top, a reservoir on the bottom, and then the filter system is in between. So you need a regular old roll of butt wipe. You're gonna take the inside roll and you're gonna remove that. You kind of have to loosen it up from the paper before you can pull it out, but you kind of just keep working it. And then what we want to do is either remove some off the outside or some off the inside so we can squish this together and then that will go down in your filter hole. So even though this looks like it's way too big to fit down in this, you can squeeze this together really, really good. And the tighter you can get this, squeezed and down into that hole, the better, that's gonna give you the better, better filtration. It's gonna separate more particles. It's gonna hold water. So now that we've got the right size roll, we're just gonna squeeze it together as tight as we can. Give it a twist. And I actually leave a little bit left on top and that way when I'm done with it, I can pull it out. Now I'm just going to pour the used oil right back into there. And what's really cool is it will hold one whole cycle's worth of oil. You can see there's nothing coming out the bottom because it takes a very long time for it to soak all that paper, get all the way through there, and in the meantime it's pulling all that junk out of the oil. I'm going to start a batch in the morning, so I want some fresh oil. So I'm going to let this sit overnight, get it all nice and filtered, and then I'm going to throw it into a batch. So that's been sitting for about 14 hours. You can see it's crystal clear again. And it does take a while this first time for this uh, for the toilet paper in here to get soaked with oil. Once it gets soaked, then it actually will travel a lot faster, but it does take a while for that oil to get soaked into there the first time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how quick it makes this oil change when it's just ready to go like that and you can just 
switch it out and get ready for your next batch. So I'm going to I'm going to do a timer and I'm going to go right now. Keep in mind that most of this time is actually just waiting for the oil to drain. Just coming up on 2 minutes. All right, we're getting to the end and a little tip for you, I like to when it's getting close to the end like this, I like to actually leave it open and pour some new stuff in the top cuz it kind of flushes out the junk that's in the bottom there. And time. So I ended up with 3 minutes and 17 seconds. In about 2 minutes and 45 seconds of that 3 minutes and 17 seconds is actually just waiting for that oil to come out. So if you have something else to do, really your oil change is only taking like 30 to 45 seconds. So what's super cool about this filter is that it can actually hold a couple batches and I think they actually make a bigger container than this one. I'm not sure how big this one is, but they do make a bigger one. Um, this can go right into there again and filter another cycle and you just keep repeating that all the time and then when you get a little down or it gets full you put it in your uh, once filtered container and you're ready for a batch all the time. You always have fresh oil and if you stay on top of this and keep your oil filtered all the time I mean a gallon of Dairyland oil will last who knows depends on how much you really use the freeze dryer but it'll last for a really long time. So I hope you found this video informative. I know it's kind of short and sweet this week but if you, if you found it helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up. It helps get the video out to people who want to see the video and, and find it useful for them. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. You get to join me and my family on our journey through our, to our retirement at the age of 40. And in the meantime, this is Retired at 40. And remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.